Well, you know, actually yesterday was a very special day in our calendar. I, I do have some questions actually, um, but yesterday was a special day. So I did want to say something about that. Um, however, we do have Matthew joining us for the very first time. Um, so we do we do want to connect, especially with Matthew today. Um, Matthew, what how much is your um, how much understanding do you have of, of our teachings? Have you have you joined other meetings um, before on this in this area? Or in, how, in, how uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I, I attended a meeting a week ago, which was a reading of the, um, I forget the full title, Loving Servant book. Oh, the Thursday meeting. Okay. Yes. Right. I, I usually join that too, but I was traveling that day. Um, so yeah. Okay. So the Thursday meeting. Okay. So that was your and first. Okay. That, that was my first. And then I have, um, I'd say for six or seven months i've been reading learning um uh, studying bhakti and and trying to um, have a daily practice okay um, so that's my and story. and what was your what was your source of information uh it varies but i would say in the um iskan line so okay. through but but also um, I tried to read sort of contemporary perspectives like um, the book Wise Love I'm reading by Pranada Kamchwa and, and so various, various things also reading. I've read the Bhagavad Gita and okay. Um, so. Okay, so you have a pretty solid understanding by now then, some foundational understanding. I I'm trying, <laughs> but yes, okay. I mean several months of, of familiarity with the concepts at least. Okay, okay, well that that helps then. Okay, so okay, well that that helps. So then maybe I I will just proceed then. Um, uh, if if it was like you really didn't know anything, then I would like to give you some introduction. But you already you already have a pretty strong, you've had a pretty strong introduction already. It sounds like so. So um, I'll, I'll proceed then. Okay, well, um, so we have our Vaishnava calendar, you know, we are following, um, which, which um, you know, records particular dates, which are of special significance to us, you know. And so we honor the appearance days of the Lord, the birthdays of the different, um, manifestations different forms of the lord in this world and we also honor the appearance as well as the disappearance days of vaishnavas you know of the great saints within our line and so yesterday um, be, because you know what is so everything that is con everything that is associated with a great personality becomes elevated, becomes exalted and purified by the connection. So even the time, <laughs> even the time and the date that is connected with a great personality becomes exalted. You know? So by just honoring that time, you know, we can, we can receive special grace, you know, we can receive special blessings. There's one very beautiful prayer, um, which is recorded in, in, um, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, um, where which is it's it's expressed by Srimati Radharani. And sorry, once I just grabbed some water here. And and she says, she says, you know, when when Krishna when Krishna came before me, I became, I could not really appreciate his presence. I could not really appreciate his association properly because I was attacked by ecstasy, you know? So ecstasy came and distracted me. So I could not fully appreciate the, the value of having his direct association. And so she says, therefore, if Krishna comes in front of me again, 
the next time Krishna comes in front of me, I, instead of worshiping Krishna, I will worship time. <laughs> because I will worship time and, and pray, pray that time will stay a little longer. Pray time will, time will, will stay for some time, you know, so I, I have more, more chance to have Krishna's association. But, 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 but anyhow, you know, you know, these, the time, the date, the place, everything connected with a great person, they become glorified, purified, glorified, exalted. And so we worship those times. And so, and all, including the disappearance days, the days of departure, you know, and, and it's an, it's an interesting thing because in the, in the, you know, and for the most part in the world, death is seen as something very, you know, it's something devastating. Death is something tragic. Death is the end. Some, death is very, something very unhappy. But for those who have understanding of higher spiritual thought, you know, of course there is the sadness of losing the, the direct company of a loved one or an honored one. You know, but there is also the un, there is also the understanding that of the eternal aspect of our nature, of the presence of the soul, you know? and 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 especially in the when it comes to you know enlightened, liberated persons, you know they they are living in a higher plane of consciousness. So when they leave this world, they are. They are rejoining the eternal reality in the company of Krishna. You know? So there is, there is sadness because we're losing their direct company, but we also know it is just like they're going from one door into another door. You know? And that other door that they're entering is much better, much superior than, than what's, being, what's you know, being experienced in this lower plane. You know? So, so there is that understanding. And there's also simply the joy in remembering such great persons because such great persons, they are present within their memory. They are present within their name. They are present within their activities. So just by calling upon their name, by remembering their glories, their activities, we are invoking their grace. You know, we are invoking their, their presence. You know, they, they are present within their memory and within their name. So by drawing upon that, they are actually entering our lives, entering our hearts, and they can purify us, they can uplift us. You know? And, and in, in a more simple way, we can also appreciate that, you know, their example, it is a glorious reminder, you know, of, you know, what is, what is the true... What is the what is the true reality? You know, what is the real purpose of life? You know, Shila Shudamar, she's mentioned how, you know, Jesus, Muhammad, you know, they are like pillars of faith in this world. He said, standing and declaring their experience of the supreme entity. Standing and declaring their experience of the supreme entity. You know? You know, like, like also Srila Sridhar meant he likes, he appreciates the example of Socrates, you know, that, that Socrates, you know, he, he died to prove his faith of the, in the eternality of the soul. He faced death when he didn't have to face death, you know, in order to prove his faith in the, in the existence of the afterlife, you know, so his example the example of, of you know, these kinds of enlightened persons, they are, they, are, they are persons who are demonstrating the tangible nature of that higher world. So, so these are very, so, so in, in actually, you know, in, in this way, you know, these great saints, in many ways, they are, their example, their life is more helpful to us than that of the Lord himself, you know. They, they, are, they are showing us an ex a clear example of, of the course that we want to follow, the path that we want to follow. So yesterday um, was the day of departure of three very great 
Vaishnavas, great Vaishnava saints in our line. You know, Shila Raghunath Das Goswami, Shila Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, and, um, and also Shila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. And um, so Raghunath Das Goswami, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, they were, they were peers. Raghunath Bhatta, a little younger. Um, and they, they were, you know, for those who aren't familiar, they were, they were part of this group known as the six Goswamis, you know, who lived in, they lived in Vrindavan, Krishna's birthplace for many years. And they, they lived very, very simple lives, you know, like lives of, of Babaji's, um, very detached from the ordinary flow of the world, um, living, you know, living in a very simple way, like under trees, you know, in a cave, subsisting on buttermilk, you know, dried bread. And they devoted a lot of, they devoted their, their energy, their time to, composing important literature surrounding the teachings of, of bhakti, the teachings of, of devotion. Um, and so, so and, and primarily, you know, we hear Rup, Sanata, and Jiva Goswami, um, they primarily, you know, wrote extensively, but, but the others also, Raghunath Das Goswami also. So, so these six Goswamis, you know, they lived together in Vrindavan and, um, and they associated, you know, often with each other. And so Raghunath Das Goswami, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, they were part of this, you know, this group. And Raghunath Das Goswami, he is especially important to us. You know, he is, you know, he had the direct association of of Lord Chaitanya Dev, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, for it was for the in the last about I think it was around the last sixteen years of Lord Chaitanya Dev's presence in this world, and and also Lord Chaitanya Dev and also Srup Damodar, who was the closest personal associate of of Sri Chaitanya Dev. So because of this, Raghunath, he, he had a very unique glimpse into the inner nature of Lord Chaitanya, you know, because Lord, Lord Chaitanya Dev, there is, a, there is a dual aspect to his Leela within this world. You know. Um, Matthew, when I say, do you understand all the terms I've used so far, like like Leela? You, you know, you know the word Leela by now. I do. I, I understand. So it's this is all new information, but I know the six Goswamis. I know all the terms. So okay. it's perfect. Thank you. All right. And and you know Lord Chaitanya, of course. I do. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Um I have to say, you know, sometimes I feel very grateful to ISKCON because <laughs> Because I feel like they sometimes do the hard work, <laughs> and then and then then people they sometimes come to us from ISKCON. And I feel like, oh, thank you, ISKCON. You already did the hard work. <laughs> um, so anyhow, so so where where was I? Um, oh yeah, so there's a dual nature to the Leela of Lord Chaitanya Dave, right? He comes with his public duty there is there is the you what there is what is known as the yuga avatar aspect the avatar who comes to propagate the particular dharma in 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 the in, within the yuga you know the yuga dharma the, the yuga avatar comes to propagate the yuga dharma in each yuga in each age and so there is that aspect to Lord Chaitanya Dev's appearance in this world. He comes to spread the movement of, of Sankirtan, of the Kirtan movement, um, to, to, you know, to, to benefit the souls of this world. But there is, he also comes with an internal desire, his own private desire to experience 
the mood, the nature, the love of Srimati Radharani. No. So, so in the first part of his Leela in this world, he, he carries out that function, you know, of, of, of the, sorry, the first function of, of uplifting the souls of this world, distributing Harinam, Sankirtan, Krishna Prema, Krishna Kirtan. And then in the last 12 years, he, he withdraws from the general society at large, and he enters into this this internal mood of Shimati Radharani. And, and so this is something which, which at, you know, even at the time, even, even the associates of Lord Chaitanya, for the most part, they were not aware of this, you know, that, that this Lord Chaitanya, the Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu before them, he is you know, Radha Baba Duti Suvalitam Naomi Krishna Srupam. He is Krishna enhanced by the Bhav and the Kanti, means the mood, the heart, and the divine golden halo of, of Radharani. You know, the internal mood of Radharani and covered by the divine luster of Radharani. So even, even most of the associates of Lord Chaitanya Dev, they were not aware of this. You know. So, you know, what to speak of the general public, you know. Actually, Lord Chaitanya, he's a, he's a very mysterious figure within India. Actually, for the most part, he's not, he's not very well known without, throughout India. He's known very well within Bengal, but outside of Bengal, he's not very well known. And then within Bengal, there are many different perspectives that persons have on him, you know, some some see him as a great saint, you know, he's honored like that by many. And there are others who see him, there are also others who see him through the lens of, of communist, communist ideology. <laughs> because, because on one level, because on one level, Lord Chaitanya, he, he was something of a revolutionary, you know, because he disregarded, he disregarded the, you know, different restrictions within the Vedic society, you know, in, in, in the sense that he widely distributed the Maha Mantra, you know, which was, which normally was considered, uh, you know, a, a, a Vedic mantra, which was not, which not everyone was eligible to, to chant, not everyone was eligible to access. So he disregarded that. And he also, he disregarded the caste system within India. And he closely mixed with persons of a Muslim background, persons of lower caste within the Hindu group. Um, so because of, for, you know, for reasons like this, you know, communists, socialists, they also appreciate him and they see him through that lens, you know. So it's a relatively small group who, who recognize him in this way, um, that not only is he, directly Lord Krishna himself. He is, he is Swayam Bhagavan. He's the Supreme Lord. Not only that, but he is, he is actually coming to this world enriched with the divine sentiment of his Shakti, his potency, Srimati Radharani. So this is known by, by very few. Um, and and, and um, so Raghunath, he had this inside view of, of the inner nature of Sri Chaitanya Dev. You know? So th this is one, you know, one special point about Raghunath. And another special point of significance about Raghunath Das Goswami is that he had this very, very close affinity for, for the service of Radharani, you know, Radha Dasyam, you know, for the service of Srimati Radharani. You know, Radha Dasyam, it's, it's kind of like, like an open secret, you know, within our line, you know, in, in the sense that, that, that our gurus have identified this to be the goal, but it's not something that we speak about very much, you know, why? Because it's something of such a fine conception and, and we don't want it to be misrepresented, misunderstood, misapplied to be understood and measured by, the, by our experience of this lower world, by the, our experience of this lower plane. 
No. So, so the service of Srimati Radharani, you know, this has been identified as the highest aspiration you know, that one can have. And that sentiment was expressed to the highest degree by Raghunath Das Goswami. You know, in, in his writings, he has expressed the most extreme mood of attachment for Srimati Radharani. You know. And so, so this is something very of great significance about Raghunath Das Goswami. And, and, you know, our line, we are generally known as Rupanugas, you know, Rupanuga means followers of Rupa, right? Um, so Rupa has been, a, Lord, Lord Chaitanya Dev, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he appointed, in a sense, Sri Rupa as the head of his line. And, and so, so we are generally known as Rupa Nugas, you know, followers of Rupa. Rupa has, is the one who has clearly laid out, established, you know, what are the teachings of Lord Chaitanya? What is the life of practice of the followers of, of Lord Chaitanya? However, in a more specific sense, we are, we are also followers of Raguna. And so sometimes you'll see it's mentioned, you know, Rupa and Rupa Raguna, you know. Our, our Param, our Param Guru Dev Shila Bhakti Raksha Shridhar Dev Goswami, he wrote, he wrote a very special verse, very special shloka, which is establishing um, the, the, what can I say, the, the ideals on which this mission, our mission, our mission is called Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. Um, so you've mentioned ISKCON, International Society for Krishna Consciousness, and our mission is called, it's not so catchy or easy on the tongue, <laughs> but Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat is the name of our mission. And the founder of that mission is our grandfather guru, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Dev Goswami. And he, when he was founding the mission, he wrote this very beautiful Sanskrit verse which is establishing the ideals upon which this mission is being, was founded. Um, Srimad Chaitanya Saraswata Matavar Udgita Kirti Jayashram Bibrat Sambhati Ganga Tata Nikata Kola Dvipa Nava Dvipa Kola Jiraje Yacha Shigora Saraswata Gora Gata Grananti Srimad no, Nityam Rupanuga Kritamati so there he mentioned, so he's, he's mentioning here, um, you know, this Sri Chaitanya Saraswad Mat, you know, is standing on the banks of the Ganga, the Ganges River, holding up this glorious victory flag, which is spreading its renown in all directions. And in that, in that um, mission, in that Mat, you know, they are, they are telling the glories of Lord Chaitanya, Lord Goranga, Gore, Shri Gore, um, in the line of, of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, and, and um, also Rupa, Rupa Nuga is mentioned there, and aspiring for the Sir Radha Jitasha, aspiring for the service of Shri Shri Radha Krishna. You know. So this is very, this is a very gist, you know, translation of, of the verse. Um, but, um, but so Rupa Nuga is mentioned there, you know, in the line of Rupa following behind Sri Rupa. But our, our Gurudev, he wrote an expanded um, translation, kind of like a purport style Bengali translation of the Sanskrit verse. And, and so like elaborating upon the points mentioned there, you know, making it more clear, the meaning. And our Gurudev, Srila Govinda Maharaj, my Gurudev, he added there, um, he, he mentioned in addition to Rupa, also Raghunath, you know, following in the line of Sri Rupa, Sri Rupa Raghunath, you know. And we also see, um, you know, for those of you who are familiar with the text, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, 
uh, by Kavi Raj Goswami, whose whose day of departure we're also honoring today. Every how does every single verse? Sorry, how does every single chapter conclude? Sri Rupa Raghunath Padejar Ash Chaitanya Charitamrita Kolhe Krishna. This is every single chapter concludes, you know, with this verse. At our um our we have one um, memorial building which was made in Vrindavan, uh, opposite on the other side of the cross from our temple, and um, and 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 in in within that memorial, this is a memorial to Kaviraj Goswami, you know, the author of Chaitanya Charitamrita, whose disappearance day we're also honoring today. And there was someone who put, because at the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sorry, the, the, I keep saying that. At the beginning of every chapter, there is a sand. So primarily the work is in Bengali, right? But the beginning of each chapter has a Sanskrit verse, which summarizes the contents of the, of the, of the chapter as a whole. Um, and so there was someone who, who within our, in that memorial building, they had inscribed every single Sanskrit verse. You know, and if you go through like all the, the those initial introductory Sanskrit verses, you're you're like concisely covering the whole of the text, right? Um, so somebody had that done, and our I, I was there actually when our Gurudev entered. I think it maybe it was the very first time he entered it. I'm not sure, I, but I happened to be there through a particular series of events. Uh, I, I wouldn't normally have been there, but. Anyway, our Gurudev, he entered this occasion and he looked around and, and one of the things he mentioned was that he said, he said, he said, the most important verse is missing. And, and then he quoted that line that, that is concluding each chapter. Shri Rupa, Shri Rupa Raguna, Padejar Aj, Chaitanya, Charitamrita, Kohe Krishna Das. That, and what does that say? The verse is saying, Aspiring for the feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath. You know, I, Krishna Das Kaviraj, you know, I am narrating this Chaitanya Charitamrita. You know, so every chapter he's giving that special honor, indicating what is our what is our line. You know, it, it is the line of Rupa and Raghunath. And so why is that? Srila Sridhar Maharaj has, has explained, you know, why do we consider our line in this way more specifically? He said, because Raghunath, he has exposed even more clearly than Rupa, what are the, the what are what is the highest ideal of our line? You know, he has revealed that and made that more clear, you know, more so than than Rupa. So Raghunath has this, this special dignity, this special position within our line. And, and, you know, as an example, we can cite one of his prayers. He has many prayers in glorification of Radharani and also Sri Chaitanya Dev, also Krishna. Um, but but one, one of, there's one prayer of his, which is particularly famous um, because it, it expresses this extreme mood of dependence, need for the shelter, exclusive shelter of, of Radharani, you know? and that that verse, Ashabare Mita Sindhu Mayaika Chanchit Kalo Mayati Gamita Ki Vasam Pratamhi Tamchet Kripam Mayi Vidasa Sinai Vikimme Karner Rajena Cha Varadu Bakari Napi, you know, and very extreme prayer, you know, and 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 he is expressing there that you know for so long. I've been continuing with my life on the, on the basis of this one hope, you know, and he compares that hope to an ocean of nectar, you know, and, and, and what is that hope? You know, that is the hope, the aspiration, the asha that, that I can, I can receive your mercy. It's a direct prayer to Radharani, you know, I'm living my life. I'm, you know, just like we maintain our lives on, on, you know, rice and vegetables and fruits. And this is how we keep ourselves alive. 
but the higher souls, they're, they're living on something else. They're living on a higher substance. You know? we, have, we have one text, prapana jivanamrita, you know, means the nectar in the lives of the surrendered souls. So the, the surrendered souls, they're subsisting, they're living on this higher substance, you know, living on this higher, higher nectar. That's how they live. You know. so, so Raghunath is expressing this. I'm living on this nectarian hope that one day I can get your grace. You know. And then he says, but if I, if I don't get it, then I don't know how I can, I don't, I don't know how I'll be able to continue. You know, what, and he says, what use is anything to me if I don't have your mercy, if I don't have your grace, if I don't have your connection? And he, he says, you know, my pran, what use is my pran? What use is my life to me if I don't have your, your grace? And more than what is even more valuable than my life, Vrindavan. <laughs> Vrindavan is, is of no use to me. It's a very bold statement. Vrindavan, the most worshipable place in existence. It has no use to me. But then he goes even one step further. And he says, even Krishna, what use is Krishna to me? Krishna is nothing to me if I don't have your connection. Oh, Radharani. Very, very bold, very bold statement of Raghunath Das Goswami. So, so Raghunath, you know, he expressed this kind of feeling, this kind of attachment for Srimati Radharani. And, and, and so for this reason, he is also known, he's also referred to as our Prayojan Acharya. Um, and, and these, these terms, um, they're very helpful for those who aren't familiar. You know, these terms, Sambandha Abhideya Prayojan, these are very, very helpful to, to understand. You know, because our whole practice, ideal, uh, the whole field, it can be summarized, can be categorized by these three terms. Um, so Sambandha refers to having a proper understanding, proper knowledge, proper having, a, sometimes it said a proper acquaintance with the environment. So understanding the true nature of ourself, true nature of our environments, what the true goal is. This is, a, this is referred to as Sambandha Gyan. And then, and then um, Prayojan refers to the goal. And that, and that is in a word that is Krishna Prema, divine love for Krishna. That is the goal, the true goal of life, which is made clear by the scripture Srimad Bhagavatam and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You know, they, they made this, they highlighted this as the real gift of the scriptures, as the real goal of every living entity within the world and other worlds. Um, and then, then Abhideya refers to the, to the practice, to the path. So Sambandha, Abhideya, Prayojan. And so there are there, so also recognized by our gurus, there are three particular acharyas who have elaborated most on these three subject matters. And so Raguna, he is referred to sometimes as the Prayojan Acharya, because he, he elaborated the most, most clearly upon what is our highest goal in life. You know, it also means, Prayojan can also mean necessity, you know, our highest necessity, our highest need. So because Raghunath most clearly exposed that, you know, through his devotion, attachment, glorification, especially of Srimati Radharani, he is referred to as our Prayojan Acharya. And, and um, I don't want to take up all the time talking about Raghunath Das Basami. We want to say something about the others too. But I'll just, another point of an interest about Raghunath is that just like in, a, in speaking in an, objective, in an objective sense, you know, he was born into a very wealthy family. You know, and he was, 
you know, he was, he was completely disinterested, completely, completely un uninterested, actually, is the proper word. He was completely uninterested. He was, he was the only son to a family which by today's standards would be considered billionaires, you know, extremely wealthy, extremely wealthy, influential persons. Um, and so there was a lot of, there was also a lot of pressure on him, you know, to continue with his, you know, the family line. Um, and, and with great difficulty, and after many attempts, he was able to extricate himself from all of that, and eventually was able to come and stay with Lord Chaitanya Dev and his associates in, in Puri, in Orissa, Jagannath Puri. Um, and actually, Raghunath is one, you know, we don't hear so much about all of the associates of Lord Chaitanya but Raghunath is, is one who we hear many, many histories about. You know, there's so much that we've heard about um, from our gurus about Raghunath Das Goswami. Um, um, but you know, what I've said, I think it covers the, the main points, you know. Otherwise, we could we could speak a long time about you know everything you know that we've heard from our gurus, you know, about about his his divine life and example he's I, I can also mention about him one of the key points is that he's he is especially renowned for his vairagya for his for the degree of his detachments from this he showed a very extreme degree of detachment from this world you know it's mentioned that he he only slept for something like an hour and a half every day you know and and the rest of the time would be spent in, you know, chanting, meditation, writing, you know, in his in his devotional activity. Um, he would he would live on on like some buttermilk, you know, very very simply, very very simply. There's one there's one story I'll mention one of the famous stories about him. That you know he was like he gradually was moving away from his life of luxury and. And after he finally was able to extricate himself from his family in Bengal, he came to stay in, in, in Puri, in Jagannath Puri, and he was living simply there. But eventually, of course, his family, they, they found out where he was, they found him, and they sent a whole entourage of servants and cooks, you know, um, some piles of, of uh, you know, gold, um, you know, to so that he could live a little bit more in comfort. Um, and and he, you know, in the beginning, he would sometimes accept that. Um, and he would he would use those resources to to feed, to make arrange like a special feast for Lord Chaitanya and his followers. But eventually he he gave that up. Um, and then and then it's mentioned how how he would he would sometimes he would beg like because Puri you know a lot of much of society in India it's you know it's it's um it's structured to support persons who wanted to live you know a, a purely spiritual lifestyle you know so there's support for pilgrims for sadhus for for um for babaji's so there there, there were special booths where where you could go and collect, you know, free prashad, you know, free food. Okay, Govinda Nandini, thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Dandavat. She's saying goodbye here to everyone. Um, and so for some time, Raghunath, he was, he was, um, you know, approaching these booths and, and collecting some food there. And then eventually, and then he eventually he felt like, oh, I'm taking food that somebody else could take, you know. And um, so he stopped that. And then he started standing in a place um, and just accepting what, what passerbys might give him. You know? And then eventually he, he began to feel like, you know, this is putting me into, the, into a mindset like, like a prostitute. And he said, because he, his feeling was like, when people are approaching me, then I'm in this mindset 
oh, maybe this person will give me something, or maybe that person will give me something. This calculation was always going on in his mind. And then he decided, so he decided to give that up. And so then, then finally, he, there was a place where old, old Prashad from the Jagannath temple was thrown and there, was, there were cows um, who would eat this. And, and, and there was some that was so old and bad that even the cows wouldn't eat it. You know? And so Raghunath, what he started to do is he started to collect this old rice, you know, this old prashad that even the cows wouldn't eat. He would wash it and he would take it with a little salt, you know, and he was doing this for some time. You know, this is the degree, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like his example of detachment, it's unparalleled, you know, it's incomparable. So he was doing that for some time. And then Lord Chaitanya, he came to hear about that. And, and he came there one day and, and he came up to Raghunath and he said, oh, you are keeping the best prashadam for yourself. <laughs> you're, not, you're not sharing this with me. You know? And Sri and, and Ch Chaitanya Dev, he took some of that you know, from Raghunath and, and he began to eat some of it himself. So, you know, you know, in the in the in the teachings of bhakti and the teachings of devotion, we understand that vairagya, you know, it's it's something internal, you know. And so, you know, there are in, in, what I'm saying is that there are different examples of vairagya. You know, there are other there are other great Vaishnavas who would mix more with the world, but their internal mood was detached. You know, is was detached, is detached. We have those kinds of examples, you know, even amongst us today. You know, so vairagya, it's really something internal. You know. Um, however, Raghunath, he he showed an authentic um, you know, external example of that also, which is helpful for us, is very helpful for us because he he showed this, he showed so clearly. You know how we do not, we don't need, you know, all the comforts, all the luxuries of this world. You know, the simple living, high thinking. You know, Raghunath showed this example to the highest degree. You know, so it is, it is inspiring and helpful. We don't imitate that, but we can draw some teachings from that. You know, and they and they inspire us. So, so today is his holy day of departure to the Raghunath Das Goswami. And um, also Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, um, also his day of departure. And, and we don't actually hear so much about him, um, but he, he was um, a born, born Vaishnava. <laughs> His parents were actually um, Vaishnavas. Um, you know, which, you know, if you think about it, wasn't so common amongst the associates of Lord Chaitanya. Um, but Raghunath, he was a, his, his parents were, were Vaishnavas and they, they were, they were um, devotees of Lord Chaitanya. Tapan Mishra was his father and he was very much appreciated by Sri Chaitanya Dev Mahaprabhu. Um, and so from his boyhood, he had close association with Lord Chaitanya. It's mentioned how he would do some intimate services like washing his clothes and things like that, massaging him. And, um, and, and eventually he settled in, in Vrindavan with the other Goswamis. And one, one point that's mentioned about him is that he, it said that he would never hear anything critical about any, about, about any Vaishnava. He wouldn't hear anything bad about anyone, especially the Vaishnavas. And, and he would simply, if someone wanted to say something negative, he would, he would say something, you know, how, oh, they are, they are trying to serve Krishna, you know, in their way. You know, everyone is serving Krishna in their way, you know, something like that. So that is one, that is one, uh, special quality. It's also mentioned he was a beautiful singer and he would, he would recite the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam in a very sweet voice to the, the other um, Vaishnavas. 
and um, and he he also had some interesting instructions from Lord Chaitanya. That Lord Chaitanya told him, you know, your he told him not to marry. Um, and and he but but he also told him, you know, for now you should serve your parents because your parents are Vaishnavas. Don't abandon your parents. You serve them until they leave this world. And then you can enter into your, you know, exclusive service life, you know? And so he followed that and served his, cared for his parents until the end. And then he, then he went to stay there. This was in Varanasi, you know? And then later he went to stay with Rupa Sanatan and the other Goswamis in Vrindavan. So that is Raghunath Bhatta. And then Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami is also very, very important for us because he has given us Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is our most valuable, most valuable scripture, you know, which is, you know, some, sometimes the way I put it to help people understand um, like how we place our scriptures you know, Srimad Bhagavatam, it is like la creme de la creme, right? And then Chaitanya Charitamrita is la creme de la creme de la creme. You know, it is, it is the, the most condensed essence of condensed essence of, of, the, of the knowledge which is given within the Vedas. You know, it, is, it is just, it is pure sweetness, pure ecstasy, you know, it is pure, pure in every sense, you know, and, and, and also, you know, what's, what's interesting about Chaitanya Charitamrita is that it's giving, you know, the highest and most pure conception, revealing so much sweetness in the nature and in the Leela of Sri Chaitanya Dev. But also, just like in a poetic sense, you know, it's it is it is very wonderful. You know, poet just poetically speaking, it is it is perfect. You know, so in terms of philosophy, it's it's unparalleled. You know, in terms of sweetness, it's unparalleled, and and the poetry is also extraordinary. You know? So. There's this one. We we're lucky. We have one recording of our of our Guru Dave chanting one chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita, and uh, and and it was kind of spontaneous the way it, it came out. It wasn't like our our Guru Dave was planning to be. It wasn't a planned thing, but but um he just started spontaneously reciting some of these verses one day, and then. And then, and then he like he stopped at one point in the middle, and he was like, he said, you know, every verse is so sweet, and, and he said, once you start, you cannot stop. <laughs> he said that is the difficulty. <laughs> so you know, so that so like so to go back to what we were mentioning in the beginning, you know, what was what was revealed to Raguna you know, the inner nature of, of Sri Chaitanya Dev, that, that was conveyed to Kaviraj Goswami. Why? Because Kaviraj Goswami took shelter of Raghunath in Vrindavan. Srila Sridhar described him as a direct disciple of Raghunath. And so for that reason, Kaviraj Goswami, even though he didn't, even though he was junior, even though he didn't have the direct association of, of Chaitanya Dev and Nityananda Prabhu and others, he, he, he connected through the proper channel. You know, he, he received this mercy and revelation from Raguna. And therefore, in his text, Chaitanya Charitamrita, he revealed what was unknown to practically everyone, you know, within the Gaudiya Vaishnava group, this inner nature of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, and, and it's, you know, we, are, we also here, we were having some discussion yesterday and one thing we were mentioning is, is it's very heart-wrenching at times reading because, you know, Kaviraj Goswami, he's Krishnadas Kaviraj, he's, he's primarily presenting Chaitanya Leela, 
But occasionally, you know, he's expressing his own inner heart. He's expressing his own condition, his own heart, his own mood, his own experience as he's giving this text, as he's um, composing this text. And, um, and so sometimes it's actually quite heartrending to read because he, he's writing this at the end of his days in this world. He's like in his 80s or something and he's losing his eyesight you know, his, his, he's losing strength in his hands. And, and he's, he's genuinely, he genuinely has the anxiety at times that he won't be able to finish the text. And, and to the extent that, that sometimes he, he pauses in, in, the, in the course of the narration to give a summary of later sections of the text, you know, because he's genuinely concern that he won't be able to finish and he wants to cover all the main points you know so there are a few places where he's summarizing you know later later sections of the text and of course he did he did complete it you know to the end um you know fortunately for us you know but but um it you know it's also kind of a testament to his own humility you know feeling himself to be an ordinary human being you know that he's, he, he was feeling that at times, you know, afraid that he won't be able to finish. Um, but it's so, it's so touching, you know, to, it's, it's such a privilege actually, you know, to hear these kinds of expressions. Um, and, and one point maybe I'll mention just as we close is, um, is that you know one point of significance here in both is that it's demonstrated both in the life of Raghunath as well as Krishnadas Kaviraj, the, the importance of the mercy of Lord Nityananda, you know, because it's 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 shown clearly that that before they began to live their full-fledged life um, of devotion, before they could enter into that they first received the mercy, the special mercy of Lord Nityananda. You know? And in the case of Raghunath, that was directly, you know, that, that is one incident described in the life of Raghunath, how he, he offered you know, special service to Lord Nityananda and also Nityananda's followers, and thereby received Nityananda's specific blessings. And after that, he could leave his family life and go to live um, in the company of Lord Chaitanya and his followers. And then in the case of Kaviraj, he's like about two generations down. He didn't directly meet with Lord Nityananda, but Nityananda appeared to him in a dream, you know, in a vision and, and gave his special blessings to him and, and instructed him to go to Vrindavan and to take shelter of the Vaishnava group in, in Vrindavan. So this is an important teaching that we draw from the examples of their lives. You know, Nitayer Karuna Habe, Braje Radha, Krishna Pabe. You know, that, you know, through the, you know, by the grace of Nityananda, then we can have the grace of Shishi Radha Krishna. You know, Socialist Sri Maharaj has mentioned, this is our line, you know, Nity, the mercy of Nityananda, then if we have the grace of Nityananda, we can have the grace of Lord Chaitanya. And then by the grace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then we can have, we can receive, we can hope to receive the mercy of Sri Sri Radha Krishna. This is our, our line, you know. And, and of course, you know, Nityananda is coming to us in the form of Sri Guru. You know? So our, our Guru Dev is seen as a manifestation representative of, of Nityananda Prabhu. So this, this is an important point of significance that is to be seen in the, in the lives of Raghunath Goswami and also Chilakaviraj Goswami. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, you know, there is, there is so much actually, but it would take, a, it would take a few hours, you know, to, to say everything we want to say, you know, so we'll keep it, keep it concise. Um, and, and, you know, 
as we said, you know, these, these, these times they're, they are, they are exalted, you know, and we take these opportunities to pray, you know, pray for their mercy to receive their divine glance upon us struggling in this lower plane, <laughs> you know, to draw their grace into our lives as we are, you know, moving towards our eternal prospect, eternal life within the divine plane. Jai Shri Raghunath Das Goswami Ki Jai Shri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami Ki Jai Shri Krishna Skari Raj Goswami Ki Jai. Does does anyone else want to want to add anything here? Any any points anyone else wants to share? No. Maybe Suvasini Didi, anything you want to want to add? <laughs> No, Didi, everything you beautifully summarized everything, everything very well, very well expressed mm -hmm. and very nice. Yeah, beautiful to hear. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your kind encouragement, Didi. And Jinmoy Prabhu, anything that comes to mind you want to share in our group today? No, I'm in, in, in agreement with Suvasini that everything perfectly said. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice to hear the glories of the of the Vaishnavas. <laughs> it's it's always for me, it always feels like such an important wake-up call, you know? Like like you have to square things up with them. <laughs> like, like how are they living? How how did they live their lives? What kind of example did they show? What were their priorities? And and how do I square up? How do I square up with that? You know, it's always like a like pull your socks up time, knock on the head time. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is why I'm doing this, you know? Because <laughs> without their examples, it's all like, abstract. it's all abstract actually, you know, all the teachings that we hear, they're, they're abstract, they feel a little remote, you know? But when you hear, and we see how practically, tangibly, you know, these teachings have been demonstrated, you know, in the divine form, divine lives of these great persons. It, it, you know, they become really meaningful to us. You know, they really can sink into our hearts and our our brains, and you know, give us that 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 real push. You know, to really make this something real in our in our lives. Right. Well, Govinda Nandini, anything you want to want to share? <laughs> oh, I need to be part of this course. Everything was well said. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Well, um. Thank you for your kind encouragement, and I'm I'm so grateful, you know, to be able to to discuss these wonderful subject matters. So my, my, my gratitude to all of you for giving me your good company and your merciful hearing. <laughs> and we have a few others who have been joining us. Um, I think some of them have left already, but I see Seva Rupa in South Africa has joined us, Dandavat Seva Rupa, and um, also Ka Karan in Calcutta, has also joined us and um, who else? Chintamani is here. And also there were a few others who were in and out, um, but I, I don't I don't remember who they were. But anyway, very happy that um you could all join us today. Always. And actually, you know, few other important dates are approaching. It's Kartik on Wednesday, first day of Kartik on Wednesday. Um, also Narutam Thakur's, let me see, I, I forgot to now. Oh, that's next week, next Monday actually. So we can have some discussion about Narutam next Monday. Um, so Kartik Rata, Kar, the month, holy month of Kartik is beginning this Wednesday. The time for us to to try to give more attention to our spiritual 
practice, and focus. Um, Shula Shida Marge's appearance day is also approaching, but that's next weekend. Um, so I think we can, can close there. Should we close there, Chinmoy Prabhu? That's very good, unless somebody else has another comment or question. They... Mm -hmm. Robert, you're doing some sewing. It, it's inspiring to see. <laughs> Um, just some uh, presents, really. Just a little hobby of mine. Oh, nice, nice, cool. Uh, I, was, I was wondering, um, you know, you mentioned those two books, the Bhagavatam and the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Yes. Those, um, I've heard they've got to be read under the direction of someone who knows, like, the complete concept. Is that right? Or can you just pick them off the shelf and start reading them? Well... Our Gurudev, he, like, if, if they are, of course, ideally, um, they should be studied under direction, under guidance, you know. Um, and, and in most of our temples, also ISKCON's temples, you know, there are regular classes on these texts. Um, so if it's possible to directly join them or remotely follow them, then that's ideal. Um, but if it's not possible, then... You know, our Gurudev has mentioned, like, if you study following this, well, I'm referring to an incident um, regarding someone who wanted to study Srimad Bhagavatam. And, and our Gurudev initially told this devotee, no, actually a couple of times. And then finally they asked her, they kept pressing the point, and then they asked our Gurudev, but if I, if I read it following the purports of Srila Swami Maharaj Prabhupada carefully, then is it okay? And then our Guru Day said, yes, that is okay. You know? So, you know, we are fortunate that these books, you know, Srila Swami Maharaj Prabhupada, he, you know, so mercifully, you know, prepared these texts, you know, with these purports. So if someone is following, you know, these with following those purports, then, then that, is, that is okay. And, and if you have someone who you can inquire from also, then then that is ideal. No. And the, um, should the Bhagavatam be read and understood before Chaitanya Charitamrita? Or? I mean, you see, that's a bit of a difficult question because Hishla Swami Maharaj Prabhupada, he actually put a lot of emphasis on Srimad Bhagavatam, even more, it appears to me, more than Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, and, and in fact, sometimes I'm a little sad because I, a few times I've met persons who were associating with ISKCON and they didn't know who Lord Chaitanya Dev is, you know, that made me a little sad. And, and I expect it's because they weren't so closely following, you know, they're maybe attending meetings in more of a superficial way. Um, but but still, it you know it makes me feel sad, and I I wouldn't I wouldn't want that anyone who attends like our meetings to come away with that you know not knowing who Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is that would be a little heartbreaking for me. Yeah. Um, but but I but you see the thing is, you know every acharya is coming and preaching in a particular time and place and adjusting accordingly, adjusting their preaching accordingly. So Swami Maharaj Prabhupada, he put more emphasis on Srimad Bhagavatam. Whereas in our own mission, you know, our Gurudev Srila Govinda Maharaj, if anything, I felt like he discouraged a little bit um, too much study of Srimad Bhagavatam. And I mean, like in our, in our main temple in Navadvip, um, they would daily read Bhagavatam. But I, I always I always felt like our Gurudev Srila Govinda Maharaj, he had, a, he had a little bit of caution. And I think in, in regards to like our devotees widely and, and in a very focused way studying that. And I think, I, I, I think it is because in Srimad Bhagavatam, there is some mixture, you know, there are some topics there which aren't you know it's possible to get lost in Srimad Bhagavatam because there's quite a wide array of subject matters that are discussed 
Um, and it's not, it's not always a hundred percent, you know, in, in the line of, of, um, you know, so like sometimes it's, there's subjects which are more supporting the direct teachings, um, of pure devotion. And then there are those which are more directly giving that. Um, so I, I, I think it's possible to get a little lost in Srimad Bhagavatam. Whereas in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's all beginning to end. Every drop, every point is, you know, purely in the, the line of exclusive devotion to Radha, Krishna, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you know. So see, the way, the way that I've, I've seen, the way I've understood, the way that Srila Swami Maharaj, he like framed it as like Chaitanya Charitamrita is the highest text. No, he there's an introduction that Prabhupada wrote to Chaitanya Charitamrita, and I recall that he says something like that, you know, like like Chaitanya Charitamrita is the something like the PhD graduate spiritual text. There's some comment he makes like that. And so I think he saw that Srimad Bhagavatam was like, you know, preparing people, bringing them towards that, you know, what's like Chaitanya Charitamrita is just giving the condensed essence. But sometimes before you to really appreciate the condensed essence, you know, there needs to be some more of a like a there needs to be some preparation for that, you know. And 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 also, you know, Bhagavatam is revealing Krishna Leela, you know. So, you know, you know, really, really we need to appreciate. We need like there's an there's an interdependent relationship here, right? In our appreciation for Lord Chaitanya Dev as well as for Sri Sri Radha Krishna. You know, they're both supporting one another. And so, and and it's also easier to appreciate the position of Krishna than it is to appreciate the position of Lord Chaitanya, you know. So anyhow, for, for different reasons, Srila Prabhupada, he put more emphasis on Bhagavatam. But our Gurudev, Srila Govinda Maharaj, you know, he put more emphasis on Chaitanya Charitamrita. And, and he, he, he seemed to have, my impression is that he had a little bit of caution in, in reading Bhagavatam. And, and, and I remember one time in, in Russia, there was one talk that he gave and he, and he said, um, he said, he said, we, we actually have some rights to read Srimad Bhagavatam, you know, and, you know, as like indicating, like we may feel, you know, we're not qualified to read it, or we may have some hesitation in studying it. And, and then, and then he said, especially the, 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 the sections which are telling the histories of great Vaishnavas. And 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 he mentions like Prahlad Maharaj, like Dhruva Maharaj. You know, there are some particular sections. You just said uh, you, you cut out for the second that you said, um, especially something or other. Oh, especially the sections which are telling the histories of great Vaishnavas. So th those were the. This is the. These are the sections of Srimad Bhagavatam that our Gurudev put more emphasis on. So, so, so then he mentioned, for example, Prahlad Maharaj, you know, the, the history, the life of Prahlad is a very important example for us. So, so Prahlad also Dhruva Maharaj, he mentioned, you know, there's also, there's also a section in the 11th canto, the teachings of the, what are they called? The Nava Yogendras, I think. Um, these like great yogi saints, they're there, I think in the 11th canto. And there are many very important verses there concerning the practice of pure devotion. Um, so there were some sections in particular um, that our Gurudev emphasized and liked for us to read. Um, but I, I think he had some caution just because there are many parts of Srimad Bhagavatam which, which can be you know, which can be taken in different directions and not necessarily in the line of purely relevant to the line of pure devotion. And for that reason, I also have a little caution um, in reading Srimad Bhagavatam. I, I don't feel qualified actually, because I feel like, you know, am I going to have the proper interpretation? No. 
Whereas in Chaitanya Charitamrita, I feel like it's all, it's very direct. The teachings are very direct, um, very straight, very direct, very, um, so it's clear, you know. But in Srimad Bhagavatam, I think there's more openness as to like, how are we supposed to properly understand, connect and place everything that is placed there, that is presented there. Um, so to, to answer your question, I, I guess I guess I don't really have an answer to your question. <laughs> um, I yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I mean, like, like to someone who's like, you know, like someone who's like really joined our mission, then then I would say, you know, focus on the books of Srila Sridhar Maharaj, Srila Govinda Maharaj, you know, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Samhita. Um, you know, that that's more, you know, they like, because the thing is, and this is another reason why I've never really felt, I sh actually, I should read Srimad Bhagavatam. I should at some point, but, but another thing is that, that I feel is that our gurus, they have given us the essence of Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, I mean, I, I can quote many verses from Srimad Bhagavatam because I've heard them by our, from our gurus, you know, and they've explained, they've explained the essence of Srimad Bhagavatam. So I don't feel that need, you know. So I would say it's a personal decision, um, but, but, but if you're asking me, then I would focus, I would say to fo focusing more on the books of Srila Sridhar Maharaj, Srila Govinda Maharaj is more helpful. Um, and also Brahma Samhita, Brahma Samhita is a bit of an underrated text, you know, Brahma Samhita is very helpful, you know, and our Srila Govinda Maharaj actually put a lot of emphasis on that, Bhagavad Gita, and then Chaitanya Charitamrita, you know, if possible, following under the guidance of, of a Vaishnava. Um, and if you like, then Srimad Bhagavatam. No. Okay. But I, yeah, um, in terms of an order, I, I, the only order I would advise is read first the books of our gurus, you know, and then you can decide, you know. Did you read Chaitanya Charitamrita is uh, translated by Swami Prabhupada in your mission? Do you have? We do. Of... Yeah, we do. We follow that, and I, I generally read from that every every day. No, that's I like that is like my morning, my morning, daily morning practice. Um, yeah, we follow Shula Swami Marsh Prabhupads because we don't have our own translation, so we we follow that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a similar question? You mentioned yeah, Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. You, you mentioned um, Bhagavad Gita. Is, is that then? Um, is that considered foundational? Yeah, yeah. Bhagavad Gita is, our Gurudev likes us to regularly read. You know, he mentioned once, every, it's good if everybody can read one chapter every day. You know, he, because uh, it gives, it gives clear, as you said, clear foundational teachings in, in Krishna consciousness. So yes, it's it's a very helpful. No, there there are Bhagavad Gita. It's not. It doesn't develop upon the teachings of Bhakti that much. You know, like like there there are many points which are discussed and elaborated upon more in Srimad Bhagavatam and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, but as you said, it's giving very clear foundational teachings which we need to be reminded of every day. You know which are very, very helpful for us. So, so yes, that is definitely emphasized by our, by our gurus. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, any, any, any final words from anyone or should we close there for today? <laughs> Thank you, Didi, so much for joining with us. We're really grateful. Oh, my gratitude to you, Chinmoy Prabhu, for always hosting this so nicely, and to all of yourselves being such a wonderful audience. <laughs>
Jai Shri Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Bhakti Daksha Shridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Shri Asi Bhakti Danta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai Krishnas Kaviraj Goswami Raghunath Das Goswami Raghun Bhatta Goswami Ki Jai Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Jai Gaur Premanande Jai Bo Jai Vishakadevi Dasi Ki Jai Jai Gurudev Jai <laughs>